Hey, welcome back. I am Olivia Kay. I am the current chair of the Interim Labor Working Group, Labor o Organizing Committee of the Labor Working Group, sorry, of New York City DSA. And I'm here with a big panel of representatives from all of our working groups and campaigns in New York City DSA. And we are going to do what we're calling spicy twos with hot tofu balls and even hotter questions. Yeah. OK, let's go ahead. Let's start Let's start distributing these. And as we're, they're just being distributed, um, I'm going to ask everybody. We'll go around the room. We'll start um, on this end of the table. And we'll end up going all the way around uh, and end on Reb. Tell your name, your pronouns, what geographic branch of New York City DSA you're in, and what working group and campaign you're representing today. Brooklyn, DSA, and I'm on the organizing committee for the anti-war working group um, and the No Money for Massacres campaign. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is India. I use she, they pronouns. I'm part of Low Man on the OC, but I'm here as a field co-chair of an eco-socialist working group. Hello, everybody. My name is Sterling. Uh, he, him pronouns. I'm from the north side of Brooklyn, and I'm the treasurer and today's representative for the Green Social Housing Campaign. All right. I'm Olivia, I already said. My pronouns are she, her. I'm from South Brooklyn branch. I'm going to try to say this again because I messed it up earlier. I am the ch chair <laughs> of the interim organizing committee for the labor working group in New York City DSA. Okay. All right. Uh, Andy Simpson, yeah. he, him. Uh, from Lower Manhattan here on behalf of the Electoral Working Group. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. My pronouns are she, her. I'm part of the Bronx Upper Manhattan branch, and I'm here representing the Socialist Feminist Working Group. Hi, I'm Smitha Milik, she, hers. I'm with the Queens branch, and I'm representing the Independent Working Class Organization. Hi, I'm Rebecca, she, her pronouns. I'm in Central Brooklyn, and I'm representing the Labor Working Group. Yeah, awesome. Big round of applause for all of our guests. Okay, we are passing around this first hot sauce. Chef, what is this first hot sauce? Uh, so, obviously, this segment uh, took a lot of inspirations from hot ones, if you've seen that. But uh, what deviates from hot ones is that instead of just straight up hot sauces, we want kind of like hot sauces, uh, hot sauces that are both flavorful, you know, they're, they feel good to eat. And not just straight plain, you know. So the first one is uh, sambal ole, so it's from uh, Indonesia. Uh, I like to use it for stir fry, actually, uh, but it's uh, really good on its own. Uh, so yeah, that would taste. Okay. Anybody have any reactions to this first one? Mm -hmm. Here, let's start passing around the balls for the next one. Oh. oh. I feel like, okay, second question. All right, we'll start passing around the, um, the hot sauce for this second question. So for this second question, it's in one sentence, what is the purpose of your campaign or working group? Like, what do you do? Am I first? Yeah, let's oh, start. Oh, sorry. Um, you gotta take a bite and yeah. then tell, okay. tell us. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name um, of this hot sauce? Fried uh, chili. Yeah, so the purpose. Am I supposed to talk about mouth? Okay. <laughs> the purpose one. <laughs> the purpose of the working group is to like uh, forward anti-imperialist um, work in New York City. <laughs> work in New York City. Um, <laughs> And the campaign is to um, call for peace, peace in Gaza. Um, yeah, and to stop the Israeli, yeah, genocide. And that's the anti-war working group. Mm, yeah. Great. And the No Money for Masters campaign. Awesome. Okay, India, tell us your working group and okay. what is what is the purpose? How does you how do you build? Um, yeah, what's the purpose? Mm -hmm. We're we're part of the Eco Socialist Working Group, and our um, Newest campaign is the Green New York campaign, which is um, the Build Public Renewable Build Out campaign. Um, so we've had major legislative win with the BPRA, 
and um, so the now the goal our goal is to um, ensure that the New York Power Authority uh, probably builds uh, uh, out in the time like um, in the right speed and the right scale to match our our needs, and that ties into like the eco socialist working groups uh, work of just like f f figuring out um, or just working to for everyone to have like uh, pollution free um, and uh, fight against like flooding um, and ensuring public ownership of our energy and ensuring um, union a union a green union uh, renewable energy jobs. Yep. <laughs> Okay, load yourself up for the next one. We'll go to Sterling. I'm part of the Green Social Housing Team. Ow. And, ow. Um, ow. <laughs> we are here to organize working classes of all of New York State to create union-built and tenant-owned social housing and help stop the housing crisis we all face throughout the state. Awesome. Okay. I'm feeling this one. It's like getting into the back of my mouth and starting to go in, into my throat. Okay. Andy. Okay. Um, the Electoral Working Group, our, our reputation probably precedes us. We elect socialists to public office at the state, city, and federal levels in New York. Um, ah, yes. So you're probably, probably aware of our work already. Um, why do we elect the socialists? We do it to uh, work on these other projects uh, that the other working groups are talking about. We do it to accomplish our goals, to protect tenants, to fight climate change, um, to fight on behalf of Palestinian people, um, to stop giving money to massacres. Uh, so we want to pass progressive legislation, and we also want to show people that socialism uh, is here, it's powerful, um, and that it can win. So I'm here on behalf of the Socialist Feminist Working Group, and we do a lot of things like um, – I already ate it. <laughs> uh, it was good. <laughs> She's just killing it. Over. Yeah, and um, we do a lot of things. We do a lot of political education, but right now our big campaign is called Mutual Aid for Reproductive Justice. We go around the city and distribute free Plan B, pregnancy tests, condoms, um, things like that um, to neighborhoods, and we are our goal is just to increase bodily autonomy through whatever means we can because it is currently under attack. Nico. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, so I'm with the independent working class organizing group and our we center independence and protagonism of tenants uh, to organize themselves and be accountable to, to worker tenants, not to housing nonprofits or NGOs. Um, who are often beholden to board of directors and funders, but instead accountable to worker tenants themselves with the long-term vision of building out a citywide tenant union. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm with the labor working group. Um, this is actually a new working group taking the best parts of the labor branch in the past union power campaign. Um, we do a lot of stuff um, in regards to labor, um, whether it's standing in solidarity with other workers in the city, um, trying to build the rank and file movement. Um, we also are working on having labor poly ed events um, and also um, helping get um, labor legislation passed that stands with workers. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. This hot sauce? Yeah. This hot sauce that everybody's been eating is this one. Yeah, I think I think everyone knows about this. This is a classic Laogan Ma. Um, yeah, I see it in all the new hot Chinese restaurants uh, from uh, Guizhou. There's an old lady on it. Okay. And then the next one we have, can you preview our next hot sauce? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is also from Guilin. Uh Here it is. It's uh, more of a stir fry sauce. I like to use it with a uh, bit of pork sometimes. A uh, little bit of veggies, you know, those go with that. But on its own, it goes really well with like dumplings. Sometimes I put like you know, uh, soy sauce in there as well. It's a legal hot sauce, a little bit spicy. So it's uh, it's getting up there right now. All right. So for this next question, we're gonna take a bite of that, and we're gonna tell everybody, um, how does your campaign or working group build the chapter and the socialist movement? Okay. 
And I'm going to plug the link right now to donate. And it's bit.ly slash DSATV live. All right. Oh, God. Um, our working group for the build the organization by um, we've been working with a like broad coalition since um, in the past couple of months that is bringing a lot of people into the um, into the organizing space that like we didn't we weren't already they're, they're like new members and um, yeah like our response to Palestine has been uh, good enough to like bring people into the fold, which has been really exciting. Cool. Okay, I said their front page. Um, yeah, so um, we've been doing it by winning unap unapologetic like socialist legislation and ensuring that it is actually correctly implemented um, and through collaboration with other New York state chapters um so to bring bpra to life across the state um yeah it just we're doing our best to implement and and uh, a socialist alternative to like a for-profit capitalist mode of <laughs> well in this specific issue it's like energy production but yeah okay and wow agony the Command Public Housing campaign helps both the uh, both, both helps the chapter and socialist movement at large by creating by reducing the barriers that we all face um, to housing, particularly housing that people cannot afford. What our future, what we're fighting for, the Public Housing Development Authority, we will have housing at every income, no matter what your job is, no matter your personal circumstances, this housing that we will build, it is for you. Absolutely. I'm feeling it. It's going further and further down my throat. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mackenzie's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but Jeff, what is, um, once Rev is finished putting her thought there, we'll have it packed back. And can you tell us what this next level thought is? Yeah, of course. Uh, before she passes out, I just want to remind everyone, you can tap out if it's too spicy. Uh, I also have emergency oat milk in the back, so if you feel like, you know, just, you know, shout my name and I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Also, so, I want to note that we are now $102 away from our next reward tier. What's our next reward tier? In solidarity. Oh, uh, verse and chorus and singer. Which is... Oh, Who what? sings it? You guys. We all sing nice. a verse and chorus of solidarity forever, <laughs> with our mouths burning with hot sauce. <laughs> okay, next hot sauce. Oh yeah, so the next one is uh, Dou Ban Jiang, a uh, classic uh, chili bean sauce from Sichuan. Uh, so this is kind of like the mother of all Chinese hot sauce, I like to think of it. Uh, like, you know, one of the first sort of like Chinese inventions was like tofu, was like, you know, soy milk, uh, and fermented bean sauce, and this is one of them, and then later when they uh, found pepper, you know, they added pepper into it. So it's classic stuff. Go with stir fry. I recommend you getting it at home. You know, go for it. Okay. After everybody takes a bite of this hot Sichuan sauce, we're going to, the questions are going to get a little more personal. I want to know about you. How long have you been a DSA member? And why did you initially join? So we'll start with Drew. Take a bite of that. Yeah. Yes. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I initially joined because of Bernie, and then I got really active after Biden won because I was just like, oh, this is not going to be good. So, um, yeah, that's like why I stayed active. I got really active. Um, I'm coming up on my two years in DSA, like in two months. And um, I just wanted a space where I could help bring about change and uh, fight the capitalist neoliberal health kick <laughs> um, and want to stop feeling guilty about just feeling anxious, about just feeling mad and sad um, and feeling powerless. And um, DSA was the first left socialist communist org in um, New York that had a one-on-one uh, -on -one membership. So props to 
and PSA for having a- an amazing onboarding game. Wow. Oh wow, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> um, first of all, shout out to the North Brooklyn DSA branch meeting. Thank you for shouting us out. So to answer the question, I joined, I'm a fan, joined when I was in high school, um, December 2016, because Bernie Sanders showed me the world I want to live in, and Donald Trump showed me the world I would hate to live in. So I'm, so I'm still part of DSA for two main reasons. One, to build the future I believe in, and two, uh, they said I can curse, so... To be that motherfucker Donald Trump's ass, and there's other people that stand with him. <laughs> Let's pass those tofu balls down. And, um, all right, as people are getting set up, okay, we're already ready down here. Um, so, what's this next pop-up? Uh, the next one, uh, which is being applied right now, uh, I can get a shot of that, thank you. <coughs> so, here it is. Uh, this is uh, actually chopped chili pepper. It's not really a sauce. Uh, it's from Hunan, so people use it, uh, put it in their cooking. Uh, and usually, uh, the traditional recipe involves, you know, baijiu, putting like Chinese spirits together with chopped pepper and garlic and other aromatics, and then sort of fermenting that for, you know, half a year or more. Uh, and since, you know, I don't know everyone's, you know, dietary preference, so this one, no alcohol, but still as pungent. So. Right, All right. 100%. So as Truett takes their first bite, his first bite, um, here's the next question is, it's again, it's about you. What brought you to your campaign or working group? And what is your connection to the issue area? Sure. So before I was a DSA member, um, yeah, I was uh, sort of a, an electoral dork. I would follow politics. You know, I'd volunteer for my, my local Democrats every once in a while. Um, and yeah, I, I didn't see that as an effective way to make change anymore. Um, and I needed some kind of credible alternative. You know, watched the Bernie campaign with great interest in 2016, uh, went out and canvassed for him. Um, and after that, I was looking for a place where we could make it permanent, where we could make it grow, and where we could carry the momentum forward uh, on behalf of important goals in people's lives, like green social housing, uh, like fighting against, you know, the president's attempt to get us involved in more wars, um, like fighting climate change. And uh, that is, uh, yeah, yeah, that sort of got me involved in the electoral work. Also, um, yes, crucially, in 2019, Tiffany Caban, um, the uh, uh, criminal justice reform, uh, you know, having elected officials who might actually be adversarial towards these police departments that are totally lawless and unaccountable um, was very important to me early on. Um, so, like I said, I actually met people in DSA for the first time at a protest um, for reproductive rights, so I've kind of always been in this line of DSA, but the campaign that we have now, um, I was actually very fortunate to be part of the group that started it up. Um, we were just able to find resources and see a need within our community um, and try to fill that need, and so, yeah. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's uh, what brought you to your campaign or working group, and what's your connection, personal connection, to the issue area? Okay. Thank my you. personal connection is I'm a tenant. I was born and raised in Queens. I can't afford to live. I cannot afford to live in New York City. So that's what brought me to um, this housing project. Uh, I live in Ridgewood. Ridgewood is, like, extremely um, just kind of like the red stabilized units are, like, being destabilized um, higher than the city-wide average. Um, uh, and, you know, this resolution that created this project, it was a resolution that was passed at the New York City Convention, the last New York City Convention. And um, I think some of us might resonate with the fact that, like, being in socialist spaces, it often can get very theoretical. Like, what does it mean? What does revolution mean? Um, what does independence mean? And so this project um, demonstrated what that could look like in a tangible way. Um, so that's what dro dropped me to it. Um, for me, I think one day it just clicked to me how much your job can affect your life, um, how much you're making affects where you can live if you get laid off or fired without cause, you can't pay rent. Um, I currently work a job that doesn't offer health care. I don't have health care. Um, I think a lot of other people face issues like that. Um, you know, our, our jobs, we spend so much time there a week. If you're 
opportunity screened at somewhere where you <laughs> spend most of your time, of course, that's going to affect you. Okay, so um, we have hit, I need to announce, we have hit, is it $1,500? We've hit $1,500, which means <laughs> we have to sing a verse in a chorus of Solidarity Forever, which I need to do because I'm the Layla King. <laughs> and I know this one. Okay. Do we have do we have the lyrics? The lyrics are in the signal. Okay. The lyrics have gone out in the signal. Okay. Okay. All right. No, all right. This is the first this is the first verse. Okay. Do you guys all know the the tune? Uh, I've heard of it. You've heard of it. All right. All right. Here we go. When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater than the great relief of summer as the court of earth is weaker than the feeble grains of wood. But the union makes us City DSA called Sing in Solidarity. So um, if you like doing what we just did, <laughs> but maybe better, <laughs> you can join them. <laughs> NYC DSA Choir on Instagram. Okay. Woo! All right. So, Jeff, what is our next song? So the next one is a classic. It's the Korean Go to Gyeong. So anytime you see like Bibimbap or any Korean stir fry, is red. That means as gochujang is. Uh, I got the ultra spicy version. So uh, hopefully this will be good. You know. Okay. <coughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna take a bite, and then I'm gonna ask you all your next question. Mm. Okay. That's not bad. Um. So, you guys are you guys all familiar with the meme of the guy from Rapunzel with the sword saw pointed at him? <laughs> okay. Okay, so what's your hottest take that will have your comrades in your working group looking at you like the, the Rapunzel Swords meme? Oh, God. <laughs> I just want to know. This is like a paste. This isn't even a sauce, really. It's yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> but it's yummy. It's good. It's like softening you up before the final storm. <laughs> That's the design. Um, I don't know. I uh, I think this is hard. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't have any bad takes, really. I oh, you're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect socialist. Yeah, no, like I I don't have, don't remember the last time anyone disagreed with anything I said. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. it's always yeah, I'm always on point. Okay. All right. True it. True it's perfect. Yeah, okay. No notes. That's, okay. that's the point. <laughs> I'm not good at hot takes. <laughs> no, I don't like them. <laughs> um, my hot take, my personal, and just hot take that I think my comrades will take issue with is that we should be running a parallel degrowth campaign. So, of course. <laughs> um. That's always a measure of capacity, and we have to concentrate 1,000% on DPR implementation. But I wish people would start, um, yeah, we started spreading the word and like, I don't know, re-educating people on like how we consume and how we interact with it. Yeah, so that's maybe a, a spicy. Yeah, take, but you say yeah, more I, about. I disagree. You say yeah, more about what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Truett disagrees with that. Yeah, so it's and we know <laughs> Truett has correct opinions. Right. So. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so wait, say more about what degrowth is. Um, what the way we uh we live and consume is like uh, everything in excess, everything. Um, it's one thing to build new renewable energy projects, but the way we're potentially perpetual energy growth is also in and of itself an issue. 
Um, and it's very much dictated by our mode of consumption and capitalism. So it's how to tackle that, which is like a kind of relearning and like a cultural shift as well. I mean, obviously by, by being socialist, by organizing a socialist space, because we're all partake, like we're all be, uh, working in our different working groups and our different part, like tour, um, uh, changing that. But, uh, yes, that's, is that Dr. Hawk? Does that help? Yeah. <laughs> wait, but true. Why is that wrong? <laughs> I don't think it's. Uh, I was, I was thinking, it's like, not totally like, wrong. Need to like do it simultaneously, but it's just keep asking it true. I yeah, I think I I just wanted to argue a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, no, I, I mean I think the we do probably, uh, we probably do need to uh, decrease the amount of uh, energy we're all consuming, but. Um, we also, it's like a redistribution issue. Okay. It's like a bigger, yeah. which Agreed. we don't. But will there still be bananas when they're socialized? Uh, probably not like the way they are today. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Terrible bananas. Uh, not in, <laughs> not in the <laughs> Northeast. To a really bad not in New England. Not in New England? No. Okay. Right. Or, pot. or pot either. Yeah, don't start over. <laughs> okay, Sterling. Sterling. Yeah. Yeah. Our take, Sterling. Hmm. Um, ow. So as a note, um, when I, oh, ow, ang agony. Yeah, um, these sauces really clear your sinuses, <laughs> and they're really painful. Like, I thought this was going to be, like, American, um, like, American hot sauces, you know, that, that it ain't shit, but, like, then I saw the chef post the sauces that they got, ow, that they got in the chat, and I'm like, damn, this, 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 this. This is trying to send me to my ancestors, you know? <laughs> um, so I'm going to give you guys some cold takes and then a hot take. Um, I know you guys will listen to this. There, there will be people who disagree with me. So cold takes about um, housing in general. Um, I support, obviously, I support rent control. I support rent stabilization. I support um, tenant unions. As I said, those are very important, and those are critical to our socialist future. I also believe in how... in the production of housing abundance. In English, what I'm saying is that whenever people are like, oh, there's going to be some luxury housing, I'm like, good. You know, like, we need, we have a housing crisis. And when you are in a crisis, you use every single tool that you have in the arsenal to try and fix it. It's like you don't go to a dent, like, you don't go to an emergency room and there's only a dentist there. No, there's a million kind of tools there. And that's what we need for housing, too. We need tools to help people stay in their homes. We need a social housing development authority to help people stay in their homes and to produce more housing. But, you know, New York City is the greatest city in the history of the world. We deserve everybody who wants to live here should be able to live here. And the only, and the what one necessary thing to do that is for all kinds of housing abundance, private and public. All right, that is a hot take. <laughs> There's a really cool hot take in the chat about how um, electric cars weren't um, yeah, I aren't agree. fiscal emissions. I saw it. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Um, okay. Next, uh, next victim over here, Andy. Andy, what's your hot take? Hot take is to the electric worker. Uh, so speaking solely for myself, and not on behalf of the electro working group, um, and perhaps as an election nerd person, um, I think that. Uh, reforming the electoral process itself is important. So getting proportional representation, getting single transferable vote, like we have at the city level here in New York City, um, like real democracies have, and like other socialist parties around the world prosper under. Um, so if we, you know, I think we should be organizing around that issue, uh, getting, you know, some kind of proportional representation or single transferable votes set up. That would also help us get ballot line independence, which I think is really cool and a perennial um, hot issue uh, inside DSA. Um, well, I have some comments here that came to that too, actually. Oh. Maybe one can maybe agree and disagree. <laughs> they, they're not going to be one of the four of you. <laughs> okay, Mackenzie. Hottest take. Not okay. Not my actual word. Hot take. Reproductive justice also includes the right to have children. Um, mm -hmm. And so when we think about not just when we're doing reproductive justice, thinking about protecting abortion rights, we also need to think about the structures that capitalism has put into place that restrict people from having children, like not having the money to raise them, not living in school districts that are good. Um, we get a lot of focus on how t letting people choose not to have children, but I think we really, really forget that some people want to have kids and they deserve that right and they deserve to raise their kids in a safe environment as well. Right, right. 
I don't think that's that controversial. Don't think about it. Well, some people don't think about it. I, I got you. I got you. Okay, Smith, the hottest take. Hottest take that, that your comrades are going to be like, what? This is my favorite sauce, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, throw it over. Yeah. Um, hottest take, I don't know if people are going to. Mm, I think it would just be that it's, like, extreme. Um, I believe that every tenant union and every tenant association should replicate the model of the Brooklyn eviction defense. They are explicit. They're very militant. They're explicitly communist. Um, they've got these like values and principles um, in order to join. And, um, you know, in that way, I, I think it's really bold um, and brave and something that every tenant association should strive to do. Okay. Um, How to take red. So I am not a union member. I am not a union staffer. I am not a labor journalist. Um, I do not fall into the criteria that once was the criteria to be in the labor branch. Um, I think sometimes we really, of course, try to focus on our members that are already rank and file workers or already in unions. And of course, we should do that but we also need to support our members that maybe need to learn how to organize um and are just you know coming into this movement um maybe because they experienced an awful experience at work um and try to teach them how to get there um you know like myself the reason why i'm not in a union isn't because i don't want to be in a union it's because i've never had i haven't had the opportunity to be in a union yet I, that's so. right and i know that's a I know that's a, a debate that we're constantly having in labor. It's like balancing our internal rank and file organizing with our new organizing and bringing more people into the movement. Okay, <clears throat> so this next sauce, are we, we're not running out of poker balls. Yeah, yeah, so as a side note, we're almost running out of poker balls. So okay. if you guys want to do half these, mm -hmm. half on, these. on the next two, half these. because I do want to leave a little bit for the crew. Oh, that's our friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So the next sauce, uh, so this is from uh, Hainan Island uh, in southern China. So when I went to that island a couple of years ago, I had this uh, and then I died. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I'm bringing this to you guys. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it's, this, it's a bit special. So it's yellow lantern pepper uh, plus uh, pumpkin puree. So the pumpkin gives it a little bit of body, gives it a little bit of sweetness, and then the pepper kicks you like a mule after, but it's really flavorful as well. A lot of umami going on. So yeah, you know, give it a shot. Okay. All right. And remember, only take half a bite. And uh, okay, our next question is, oh, hold on. I have to take a bite first. Hold on. Woo, that's tangy. That's tangy. Okay. All right. What is, a yeah, personal question for you. What is your biggest concern or worry for the future of our movement? First part, first part. And then, but what gives you hope? What's your biggest concern or biggest worry for the future of the socialist movement? And what's giving you hope right now? Yeah. And remember, half these because we're running out of poker balls. Um, it hits you like acid. <laughs> something happened to my mouth it's, it stopped hurting it was like i got rid of all the yeah um i think uh crap uh well sorry i'm i just completely forgot the question <laughs> wait 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 so apparently there is there is something like a spice high right spice high i might be there yeah i think we're already there some of us okay wow my tongue is on fire something that makes me hopeful and or something what so um, biggest concern or worry for the future of the movement? Oh, okay. Um, what gives you hope? Right. I, I think, so for DSA specifically, I think an uh, issue that writ, writ large that I've noticed is like, there. it's either like you're a new member and not super plugged in or you're like extremely plugged in and cadre and there's like not a ton of like middle ground there and like it's obviously there's people like that but like that's the thing that i think we need to build out is like as new members are coming in and like waves of excitement there we're like building new like formal roles for them or uh it can be informal too and my hope is that uh i don't know i always whenever we meet other people that like online it's like 
oh, we like completely disagree. It's all this like bullshit. And then like when you meet them in person, it's like they're very normal socialists that we all get along. So. Oh, I'm seeing someone say in the chat the truant is sober. Don't get him spice high. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Are they telling lies, Druid? I'm I'm lying. I do know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. All right. I'm. My eyes are watering. <laughs> really, it's just because all of you are inspiring to me so much and bringing me to tears. That's what's happening. We're together. Okay, India. Right, um, take a bite and then tell us. Yeah. Biggest concern or worry for the future of our movement. But what is giving you hope? Oh, oh right, sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. Ah. It's very sultry. Okay. Um, mine's not very specific. It's just larger. I'm just overwhelmed with the amount that needs to be tackled. I feel like there's a deadline and a fuse burning with like the rise of the fascist movement <laughs> and climate disaster and and so much and it feels very overwhelming i mean big part of why i mean why we all organize on the left the socialists and beyond but what gives me hope is corny as it may be my comrades seeing how dedicated they are to their work um showing up time and time again okay sterling, <laughs> sterling. Yeah. biggest concern or worry for the future of our movement yeah um, and these are really tasty sausages. <laughs> they've, they've, they've been uh, salty at fight. Like, I appreciate that. I know? made the mistake of touching my eye. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So, well, that, you know, th that's what the oat milk is for. Just like, <laughs> ru just like rub that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, like an eye lotion. Um, <laughs> so, I worry, um, I, I, have, I have two worries. And, um, so the first is, I'm worried what happens to our membership when and if if and when we lose. And I don't mean like one loss, like pe but people will hang, like, okay, there were a lot of pundits, dumbass pundits who shouldn't have their jobs, who are like, oh, because of October 7th, GSA is going to die in New York City. I'm like, get a life. Come on. <laughs> like, if you, if you, if you honestly... And I'm not talking about you people. I'm talking about like the pundits who should know better. If you if you thought that, um, give me a job. I don't even want it. I you, you shouldn't have it. But it's like I'm worried about like what happens if we lose. And no, I'm just saying like God forbid like AOC loses election if she runs for Senate. God forbid all of our you know all of our electeds are gone. Or God, God forbid what if we don't have a piece social housing? What if what if we don't come up short? Because in my experience in sports and in life. Is that it's easy to get people to join your movement when you're winning, when there's continued success. But when you fall into a ditch, when it's hard, when you're stuck in mutual, that's when people start to become disillusioned. And that is something that I worry about a lot. Um, and also, like electorally, something that I've seen is one reason why San Francisco and Seattle and Portland have such really bad politics now, especially San Francisco. Like, London Green is the most left-wing person running for mayor that cycle. That's criminal. Uh, we need uh, patriots to occupy that city. But it's like, like because they've, um, they, all of the working class people who used to live there got, um, they got displaced because of a lack of housing building and a, la and a giant rise in rents. I worry about that in the long term with New York City because we've had, with the exception of the pandemic years, we've had continuous rise in rents. And I think, you know, I'm worried about like what happens if this truly becomes a quote unquote playground for the rich? Mm -hmm. What happens if people like me can't afford to live here on a starting salary? You know, that's going to do really bad things to the politics beyond even DSA. But something that I do have hope about. Um, especially in, in New York City, is that we got some dogs that we're working with as comrades. We got some real people who have who want to win and, and who want to always evolve their game to win. And I don't think that our opposition wants it in the same way we do. I think we want to win more than our, our, our opposition wants us to lose. And we're going to see that in June 25th for our legislative primaries. And we're going to see that in with between New York and in Green Social Housing. Hell yeah. Okay. We got raided. Do you wanna... Oh my gosh, we just got raided. We just got a Gremlo raid and... <laughs> <laughs>
Here we all sang a verse and a chorus of Solidarity Forever. Y'all missed it, but it's okay. It's okay because what is our next reward tier? Two thousand dollars. Lights off. Two thousand dollars. We turn the lights off for five minutes. It's like it's quiet. You can't see us crying because it's a hot sauce. Okay, okay. So we are doing hot, uh, hot questions and hot poo poo balls. So our next, our next que- uh, victim over here. He's going to tell us their biggest concern or worry for the future of the movement, of the socialist movement, but also what is giving them hope. We have Andy Simpson of the Electoral Working Group. Say goodbye to Andy and tell us. Um, so, uh, I like this phrase, stuck in neutral. Uh, I think that the worry is is that we lose momentum and that people, you know, see that, that we feel like we're going in circles, uh, and uh, you know that, that they don't see the results of their work in the world. Um, you know, and that's a that's a threat to membership. It's a threat to uh, you know, right, the, the feeling of hope that inspires the whole thing. Um, and my hope, uh, and the thing that you know I think counteracts that, is that we do have an organization now. We have this organization, and we have the work that the people here do, um, which is so cool. Um, and if you think about 10 years ago, uh, nothing like this existed. Um, so we were able to take the momentum of, you know, the sort of green shoots like Occupy Wall Street or the Bernie campaign, and we were able to turn it into an organization that has chapters all around the country, and is electing people at all levels of government, that is passing legislation, um, that is setting up tenant unions, uh, that is uh, doing entryism into labor unions, that is uh, uh, changing the labor unions from the inside, um, setting up new ones, uh, Starbucks, so on. Um, and yes, yes, so, so my hope is basically looking backward to 2014 and 2004 and realizing that we have the kind of organization now that can keep the momentum going, that can keep the train moving down the tracks. And I'm excited to do that. All right. Okay, so we have somebody in the chat saying that hot questions would have been better than spicy twos, but I'm partial to spicy twos. I think, because the name of this segment is spicy twos. <laughs> Not, okay, Mackenzie, <laughs> tell us. What biggest concern. Um, my biggest concern is that we are trying to build a movement and we we have this big growth operation, but we're not really expanding in terms of like age diversity or like family structure diversity. I feel like DSA has a very homogenous um, group in terms of like college educated, um, a lot of white men. And I think that that's really gonna hold us back as we move forward. Um, Don't but there's anything wrong with white men. Uh, we love you white men. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot wrong. Their time is up. But it's okay. Uh, but <laughs> it's fine. But what gives me hope is that um, we do have specific groups trying to break out of that mold, and I, I really hope that those movements really catch on, like um, Red Sprouts Comrades with Kids that's targeting uh, families. I mean, who understands the need for socialism better than a family who cannot afford child care? Um, and so, yeah, I think that gives me hope, and I hope we continue to move forward with that. Tell the people what Red Sprouts and Comrades with Kids does. Oh, well, Red Sprouts is um, a organization throughout DSA, New York City DSA, that is building a, kind of a child care network, so that way we can provide child care at meetings. I attended a training. It was fabulous. I highly recommend everyone also attend a training. Um, and Comrades with Kids is just a group for people who have kids um, and want to get to know each other in I don't have kids, so I'm not really involved in that one. But, <laughs> but yeah, Red Sprouts is awesome, and everyone should take a training if they can. Awesome. Okay, 
too fast. Mm. Biggest concern and worry for the future of our movement, but what is also giving you hope? Um, I guess personally, um, my biggest concern is that, um, you know, as socialists, uh, we believe in climate change, that it's a real thing. Um, and if we believe in climate change, then we know that we don't have that much more time. Um, so I, I, I worry that our strategies aren't really shifting to the, to the moment that we're in and that we're increasingly finding ourselves in as fascism pervades this country and, um, and, and its leadership uh, in both parties. Um, I think just climate change alone tells us the normal way of doing things. Really, um, I'm not saying we need to throw it out the window. I'm just saying that I don't think we're, we've really developed a, a way to, to, to match the sort of momentum that we, we need to be at. I think the days of going to Albany and, and, and spending most of our resources, you know, calling our legislators, you know, I, I, I think that we're beyond that point. Um, so, so, so that is a worry. Um, and uh, I will say that what, what's giving me hope is that, um, you know, I will say there are elected officials who are doing what they can, um, who I do believe in. Um, uh, you know, like uh, Assemblymember Zora Mamdani, Mamdani just being um, very bold in everything that he's doing, truly a radical. Um, but I would even uh, shout out, you know, black socialists from the city, like a Charles Barron, like a Kristen Richardson Jordan, who are, um, uh, you know, explicitly anti-democratic party, who are the only people to uh, vote against uh, the speaker, uh, which is really unheard of, taking a stance to just really be independent, pushing to obstruct, to obstruct uh, the leadership. Um, and, and not just elected officials. Fr frankly, I think that um, sometimes we romanticize elected officials and sort of put this on, put this on this pedestal without any real way of holding them accountable to the decisions that they make on a day to day level. Um, so, who I really believe in are working class uh, people, my comrades um, sitting to the left and right of me. Um, you, you know, there there are plenty of people in DSA who I who I you know may disagree with uh, strategy wise, but ultimately we're all here fighting for liberation. So that gives me hope. Um. Um, when we like talk about bringing other um, demographics and more like working class people into this organization, um, I think something we really don't talk about a lot is that our organization appeals to people that work in a nine to five schedule. If you don't work a nine to five job, if you're working a night job or a weekend job, it's almost like it is so hard to be active in this organization. Um, and another thing I think, um, that is really potentially going to set us back is our comms are a little behind um, considering like other big organizations. I think this is a great example of a way that we're trying to improve that. Um, but we really need to think about the things we're putting out there and actually like how the platforms we're using work and how we can utilize them and also be thinking about like print comms also. Um, and on the good, like we have such amazing, dedicated people um, that are so hardworking um, and dedicated to this organization, and we've had so many successes just over this past year. Yeah, right. I like that. I like that we're giving like a, a lot of constructive feedback for some of our comrades <laughs> in this chapter. <laughs> I hope I hope co-chairs and leadership are watching. <laughs> okay, mm. our last. Hot dog. Yeah. Um, the name. The last one. <laughs> the name got me a little scared. I don't know if y'all saw it. Like, the stuffed hole. What is this name? What is this hot dog called? So this is the uh, Elijah's extreme regret. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, Linda uh, Austin <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, it's Linda Austin. <laughs> Carolina Reapers and Trinidad Scorpions. Right. So this is you know one of the like the, I reserve the last place for the legit hot spicy sauce. Okay. And you know what? I've been standing here for like an hour. I feel bad because I'm just chilling and you're all eating. So I'm going to take a dab of this. Like, you know. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Chug, 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 I want to hear each one of us describe our vision. What's your vision 
for our socialist future. Wow. Oh my god. It's actually okay. <laughs> it's really vinegary. Which I'm not I'm not partial to. Ending violence in the Middle East and getting a state for the Palestinian people would be really good. Um, I think uh, I think that work looks like everyone working together um, and calling out um, the con the military contractors that and the politicians that work with them. Uh, and getting all the other things everyone here is talking about, like social housing and um, a Green New Deal. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, can't go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch your eyes. Don't do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not touching my eyes. I'm not at this table. She loved um, Truett's answer. Yes. Please, child. Okay, on first. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, I'm worried about this. To add on to it, all that and more. Um, more than just a livable future, um, a beautiful future, a truly like democratic, um, an egalitarian future, anti carceral future, uh, an international movement. Um, in, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what more to say. Uh, there's a lot <laughs> I want. Um, I guess if thinking specifically around climate and eco and thinking about um imagining what it could look like looking at the best of it would be um solar punk would be like a cool like um, but that's a lot of work to get to that but i don't know i feel like i have no more to give <laughs> i'm so afraid for you sterling <laughs> <laughs> Vision for our socialist future, Sterling. <laughs> um. Mm. Oh, oh, hey, hey, hi. Mm. <laughs> oh, hey, ow, oh, man, damn. Hey, can, can I retract that, like, waiver I signed? Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Ow. Oh, agony. Um. <laughs> um, okay, I'm actually going to tear up here. Um. There has to be a full line. I gotta eat this like last bit. Uh, oh my god. Why are you doing that to yourself? Because, um, uh, I don't know. I should ask my therapist next week. Um, <laughs> What's your vision for our socialist future? <laughs> One where I don't have to eat this every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, all right. For real, for real. Um, I want. I want the future of abundance. I want a future where every single person, where every tenant is empowered. With against their landlord, against everybody else, because the landlord knows the tenant has options and they don't have to suffer under bad managers. I want a future of labor abundance where workers have a strong unions to protect them and they have the option of knowing that if they have a job that they don't like, then they can leave for a better job because that's how, that's how many jobs we have, that's how strong labor is. I want a rule of life abundance. Where we don't have to watch kids get bombed and die way before their time. That everybody can live as long as they want and eat as good as they want, live as rich lives as they want without the threat of anybody else trying to stop them. I want transit abundance. I want a, a world where nobody has to own a car for personal reasons. Where you walk to the bus stop and there's guaranteed bus lanes ready to take you on the people's limousine to wherever you want to go. <laughs> and where, the, where, where you don't have to worry about the trains. The trains will always come for you. That is the world I want. And the vehicle in which I believe that we can get to that abundant world is through the Democratic Socialists of America. Ooh, Hell yes. Yeah. On the people's limousine. Yeah. I can take that bike. Do it, do it. Right. And then you're going to tell us 
You're good at that, too. Oh, that's my turn. Okay. So I usually have to pick one. Because when they're supposed to be sidetracked, they're like staring. Well, I'm gonna um, do that. Or Deep Space Nine. Really, Deep Space Nine. It's a, it's a real time story. Um, that's um, something that was imaginable as a future um, for humanity not that long ago. Um, and a lot of a lot of the the threat to us, a lot of the challenge to us, is to to take away um, imagining a better world, imagining that things could be better than they are now, in a big way, in a different way. You know, um, in the shorter or medium term, before the invention of warp drive, um, <laughs> I want to build a labor party that is worthy of that name, in the United States. Um, it is a crying shame that we don't have one already. Uh, there has been, you know, there's, there's a lot of American history there. Um, but it's something that we can do, and it's something that we're on the verge of now. Um, so my vision for a socialist future is one where there is a proud labor party that governs and delivers for the working people and for tenants uh, all over the country. Okay. Um, it's very rude of you all that we're, like, really pushing ourselves to tears, and there's just been no donations this past half hour. <laughs> Y'all say you should donate. I'm actually going to start crying now. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, Flash. Dia, thank you so much. Okay, before we go, to, I just want to plug that if we reach our next goal donation, I'm going to share my go football recipe in the chat. So, go for it. My vision for a socialist future is one where everybody has the right to live and play and enjoy life, and they don't have to fear getting thrown out of their house or losing their job or fearing for their kids and their my god and um yeah and oh my god i lost my train of thought <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i think that we should all just get to be safe and happy and that's that's the end Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Honest, I agree with what everyone said, um, especially my comrade who spoke about abundance, just abundance in every possible way, in every sphere of life, um, and just um, I guess generally a democratic socialist republic, um, uh, one where we don't really have landlords, where the ruling class maybe they didn't disappear, but they don't really exist because we seized all their wealth. Um, and, um, lastly, just, you know, you know, our carbon footprint just greatly reduced, uh, especially due to the military sort of demilitarized, uh, country, hopefully, um, that doesn't wreak, um, you know, death and destruction across the global South would be great. You just have to tell us your vision for the socialist future. Yeah, I think. <laughs> What everybody was saying, <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, everyone, people were just like, be afraid that they're going to lose their job, that they're going to lose their health care, their house. Um, you know, especially living in New York City, so many people every day are wondering if they have to leave because they can't afford to live here. Um, also, I, myself, I come from a super, like, small Texas town, which is exactly how you imagine a small Texas town to be. And, um... It's like seeing the movement moving to places like that um, and really building our smaller chapters, too. So. Woohoo! Oh, my God. We made it. We made it. We all made it through all 10 levels of hotness. We did. So now, <laughs> as a reward for getting through all 10 levels of hotness, each one of you gets to look into the camera and give us your call to action. What? And it's probably going to be a bit.ly, right? Uh, Okay, and as they're as these are being given, I think I believe they're going to be dropped in the chat. Yeah. Okay, so true it, call to action. Yeah. True it, your nose is so red, it's yeah. perfect. Good. I'm no, I couldn't, I couldn't have responded to this like a minute ago, so that's good. Uh, yeah, my someone will hopefully post this in the chat. Uh, Socialist.nyc/gaza has all the events. Um, we're tabling every weekend at different locations throughout the city. On the 28th at 10 a.m., a 24-hour vigil is going to start with the um, ceasefire coalition. That's going to be sweet. 
Um, and then our next um, general meeting is next Friday at 7 p.m. OC elections. You should run. You can still run uh, if you have ideas on what to do for the anti-war working group. Come make it happen. Um, and no, for real. Uh, that's not. Uh, yeah, we we need people, experienced people. Um, there's gonna be an art build for a Saint for a Saint Patrick's Day march that we're gonna do. That's like, and then we're gonna have a Saint Patrick's Day contingent. So pretty much. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot to look at the camera. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Applause for Truett. Yeah, Truett. And the anti-war working group. Yeah, who more? Free Palestine. Okay. Um, India. Okay. Call to action. So my call to action chat is um, March 7th is the next eco-socialist working group general meeting. Um, we're talking about uh, the three in New York. Um, get people plugged in to the different committees. What do we research? Uh, if you have any comms experience. Um, if you want to do more in the field, uh, membership, we always need more people to help bring on more people. Um, it's a perpetual cycle. Um, and so the link for that is, I don't think I'll be put in the chat, but it's ecosocialist.nyc slash events. Events with an S, multiple. There's that. You can sign on through there. Um, and there's also, there'll be more events there. And if you're interested in reading or potentially signing on to the Green New York, um, we also have our bit, uh, bit.ly slash green uh g n y sign on thank you all right yeah. so a big round of applause for india for making it through the 10 levels of hotness on spicy twos all right okay starling all right um so this is gonna be comprehensive um i can't see the chat anymore so i love you guys but um all right if you are in new york state bit dot l y slash and this is all one thing there's no spaces and no things green social housing n y we are coming to a town near you while i am speaking from new york city and while we're uh while we're doing the most activity in new york city we have people from all over strong island in ithaca <laughs> in albany in buffalo they are they are about to launch their campaigns over there if you are in California, I recommend that you look into our comrade Alex Lee's social housing bill, um, as well as our friend um, Aisha Wahab of Hayward. They are they have been pushing for years now for social housing in in the Golden State. You know, Godspeed to them. If you are in neither of those states and you want to get involved in this, um, we are happy to talk with you, and we are happy to get this. Uh, to get social housing in your state, because wherever you live in the world, people need housing. People deserve the best quality housing they can afford, and that is in that is in social housing. No luxury is too good for the working class. That's right. Applause for Sterling for making it past all of the ten levels. Oh yes, you did it, my friend. You did too. Okay, okay, Andy. Call to action. Look at the camera. Tell us. Yeah, okay, so I'm working on getting Bitly here, but I'll give you the events and maybe the Bitly at the end. Uh, one week from today, Saturday, March 2nd, in Astoria, the People's Republic of Astoria, we will have the petitioning kickoff with Zoran Mamdani and Kristen Gonzalez. It's a great way to get involved at the beginning of an electoral cycle. Uh, March is petitioning season, as people who know New York elections know, uh, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll get started right there. Um, we've also got, even sooner, you know, and if you're, if you're more of an indoor person, if you don't want to go outside, if it's super cold out, uh, Monday, February 26th, at Jonathan Soto Phone Bank. Um, Jonathan Soto, one of our insurgent candidates up in the Bronx, we could uh, <clears throat> really scare Richie Torres in his own backyard um, up up in the Bronx. Um, one more event for you, the New York City DSA Electoral Palestine Solidarity Strategy Summit. So this is talking about how Palestine solidarity work and electoral work can plug into each other and support each other, uh, which is going to be really cool, and it's especially cool for people who've gotten involved in the last few months. Um, yes, and that bit.ly is bit.ly, bit.ly slash 2024 DSA electoral. And that's the New York City events. You can find everything there. Yay! Congratulations, Andy! 
Okay, we can be called to act. Okay, call to action. We are having a meeting on Wednesday here at the New York City DSA office. Uh, several of our comrades are going to come and we're going to do a skill share to prepare organizing skills to move forward with our mutual aid for reproductive justice campaign. If you want to get involved with that, if you care about reproductive justice, healthcare access, providing resources to underserved communities, please come to the meeting or reach out. We want you to be involved. Also, buy a social MT from our Instagram at NYCDSA underscore social All of the proceeds go to buying supplies for our kits like pregnancy tests, and they're adorable. What else could you ask for? <laughs> Smith, a call to action for IWCO. Yeah, so um, for folks who want to okay. get involved, we have a training that we're offering on March 4th at 4.30 here at the DSA office. That's 14 Jefferson Street. The training will talk about sort of how you can build up a tenant association in your building. Maybe not. Maybe the situation isn't right for your building. But um, if uh, we're also going to talk about the solidarity model and what it means to support your neighbors who are also organizing. And last but not least, at the end, we're going to um, plug you in to your uh, your um, your borough based um, independent working class group as well. So you can get directly involved. Awesome. Yeah. Rev, Rev, call the action follow, for labor. Follow NYC Strike on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Slash DSA TV Live. Yeah. And we need $141 more to get to what are we getting to next? The Toku Ball, the Toku Ball recipe. Oh, yeah. This, they're really yummy. You want this recipe. So throw us some dollars. And next, up next, we have our special guests. These are the New York members of our National Political Committee. So we're going to toss. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We're going to toss to them. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. 